More time for the finals, everyone! We are in semi-final of the winner bracket here at the HGC 2024, the Hanzo Genji Cup. Tomb of the Spider Queen is our first map to kick things off on. And we have two NA teams going up against each other. Squeal Team 6 and the Anti-Clown Association. After the round robin, these two came in second and third. We're down to the final four teams. Only one of the European teams, of the two European teams, made it into the final four, and that is uh, the Enjoyers. And well, they are already in the lower bracket there. So uh, this is all playing out on the NA server. Again, that means a big ping disadvantage, of course, for the Europeans. But we still had a couple of teams that signed up to play cross-server, just as a side note. But this is all playing out on more NA-friendly times on the NA server and therefore obviously way more NA teams here. And we now have Squeal Team 6 going up against uh, the Anti-Clowns. So, should be an interesting one, honestly. Uh, Pork and his boys are definitely the favorites here, I guess. But again, number 2 against number 3, so this is a lot closer than any of the other matches that we've seen here so far. This is the best of five, by the way. So now that we're in the finals, we're going full best of five with a double elimination system. So if you lose here, you still have the lower bracket where you can go for a loser's bracket run. And with our first pick now for the Anti-Clown Association for ACA, let's see what we're getting. We get Sylvanas. Yeah, Roger loves his Sylvanas. This is actually a first pick that they have played. I mean dozens of times. An insta-lock for Diablo and Brightwing. Not even hesitating. Now Porky promised me that they're actually going to play more money picks. So watch out for the mounts on the side of Squeal Team 6. Still a fantastic name. Porky, the captain of Squeal Team 6 with some money picks. It's gonna be awesome. So yeah, Blaze gets taken. So does Malfurion. Could go for a sniper comp even. Jojo gets banned because of all of the wave clear that she brings to the table too. But I'm still having my eye on Sylvanas because Roger could definitely take some of those forts out and uh, empower some of the web pushes, always assuming that they're going to get that properly. Now anyways, uh, that gets us very quickly the final two bans for game number one in this best of five series. Garrosh gets banned out, so he's not going to be part of game number one at least. I still personally want to see what we're getting in regards to damage. The only one that has been banned out so far is Junkrat. I guess my F. But when it comes to range damage dealers, we could still see that Dirty Gromy pick. Hanzo also up. Basically everybody that gives you long distance poke against turn-ins and also vision is great. So Hanzo and Chromie would be two that you can definitely play here. We have, of course, had some of the NA teams also play We're around with uh, Lunara in the past. So that's another one. And here comes Gul'dan for the wave clear. All right. And with Gul'dan, you can essentially play every single build these days. You can go for full drain build. You can go for fell flame build. Obviously, you can go old school, standard, and just go for uh, the Echo Corruption. Leo for the bottom of the map. So it's going to be a 1v1 between Blaze and Leoric that gets played out. And with the final two picks, we're also now going to get the main tank for the Anti-Cloud Association. So, who's going to start things off for them? It is a Nuburag. Nuburag into Blaze and Tychus, played by Kelsia here. But that leaves us with our final pick. So now we're getting chaotic. I mean, Squeal Team, they have a very solid draft now. Tychus as a choice. Oh, by the way, when it comes to draft rules, you can play here. Like, it, this is vanilla tournament style. So no, no shenanigans in regards to what you can pick and what you can't pick. Nothing where you can only play hero once within a series. A bit of a, bit of a note there for all of you that might have tuned in for this one as their first match of this tournament. And we get for the first time a Eve. I like it. Leyline into Apocalypse is a combo that they could possibly use, maybe even with Leoric. And his Entomb. So, ladies and gentlemen, we get some Edive action. Let's go. Game number one. Squeal Team 6 against the Anti-Clown Association. This might be actually our first Medivh in the tournament. So, I like it. The Squeal Team on the left side with Porky on Diablo. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Nintori on Brightwing. We get Brandon playing Gul'dan. 
and then over on Leoric, it's Nas and Chaotic with Medivh. I'm really keeping my eye on Medivh because we're not getting a lot of Medivh plays these days, as I just already said. So I want to see if he's able to complete his baseline quest properly and how much of an impact he's going to have with this. Over on the right side, Mason Blaze is playing Blaze. That's always fitting. I like that makes it easier for me. <laughs> Valaman, Malfuri and Kelsey on Tyke as we got Roger and Sylvanas and Godfilth is playing in Uberak for the Anti-Clown Association. So let's clown around a little bit on this and uh, see how Mediv does. First stack already acquired, went into the Portal Mastery on level 1. Uldan has decided that he goes into Fell Flame as his build. And Sylvanas wanted to go for a tower at the bottom of the map and gets immediately targeted. They want her, they're not able to get her. But they cut it a bit close here, so yeah, this could have actually been a kill. Instead, it turns on Porky. He could still lauber. He could still pull a Lauba here, but he's able to uh, save himself. And yeah, we're not getting a kill just yet. One minute mark is about to pass. Nobody has died. Medif is trying to get some more stacks together, sitting at four right now. So yeah, definitely going to keep my eye on his baseline and how quickly he's able to complete the quest, if at all. But it's kind of cool that we're now getting Medif as a hero. Very late. Again, they were saving this for a long time. And if you have a good Medivh player in your midst, then you can do a ton. He is such a great utility hero that allows you to escape out of fights that are not really going your way, that allow you to also engage. And of course, there's a lot of Wombo potential when you're comboing him off with Diablo and potentially a few others later. So there's definitely a couple of things that they can do. Put an attack against Diablo, first of all here. And the portals, they keep coming. So quick portal play is being made, Chaotic again sitting at the front and is now sitting at 11 stacks so he's playing quite far out in an attempt to get himself stacks for the baseline quickly. Each team very eager to also go for additional uh, gems now, trying to maybe even turn those in. Leo is for example trying, I suppose the Blaze is going to shut that down but here in the middle we have the two camps. Yeah, and the attack is coming in very easily as yes, Sylvanas is trying to burn this down. So Sylvanas is definitely one of the key players when it comes to these pushes. Having still with the new Burak and him focusing on more of a dive build. Now under King as his level 4 choice. And they go for Medivh and there's a shield. Oh, and Chaotic gets out. 17 stacks. Yeah, that would have been annoying. If he dies there, that would have been very, very annoying. So he is... Barely able to make it out because the shield cooldown was still available. Talking by the way about stacks, we have in the rhythm for Tychus as his level 4 choice. So not going for the bigger they are against Diablo, but instead playing within the rhythm, trying to stack that up too. With the first minigun rotation, he only got two stacks, not really a whole lot. But let's see how this is going to play out for Kelsey as the game continues. How much damage he can actually do on this. Right now, the attack at the top, Gul'dan trying to not only complete his level 1 quest, which is about to happen, but also, of course, slowly burning down the gate. Just the vision alone that this is going to give them is really going to help. That quest is completed, and Medivh is now more than halfway done. So Chaotic needs to be cautious. You don't want to go too overboard, and then all of a sudden, you know you're getting crushed there. So, turn-in attempts are being made. It's mostly the Anti-Clown Association. That's 10 gems on Leo that he might now lose. But Medivh to the rescue. Quick shield is out and that saves the day for the skeleton. And Medivh is at 25 stacks now. That's not too bad. Needs to be very, very careful that you don't die when you're hitting the 30. But yeah, the first one to fall is actually Gul'dan up at the top. So yeah, with the Nubarak diving in, they were able to take him out. Gul'dan gone, but the rest of the team is still able to pick up the slack and also the gems. But the first turn-in could now happen for the red team. They're trying again for Medivh, but the root is not connecting quickly enough, so they can't lock Medivh down. He's at 28 now. Only a single kill, but I like the way that the red team is currently trying to really push for the first objective. If they can do that early on, they might really be able to pin the blue team down a bit. And, of course, one of the things that you always are going to try to accomplish is move in and destroy Medivh. So if he gives you an opportunity to do exactly that, they are going to pounce right away. 1v1 down at the bottom of the map still continues. 
Interrupts are happening, 32 stacks by now on Medivh, so this is the time where you want to be very, very careful and hold that shield cooldown, for example, back for yourself and not wasting it on anybody else. Rather let someone die than lose those stacks. This is a pretty big output if you can get that. There's the root, yeah, talking about it. Stuns are happening as Tigus gets targeted, but he's not the only one. Porky is low and gets away with basically no hit points. He was sitting at 20 HP or something and then is able to get out thanks to the shield and portal coming in from Medivh. Once again highlighting how absolutely powerful this can be. By the way, talking about combos, one thing that I haven't even pointed out yet, but again, experienced heroes players will be aware, with Diablo in the mix, you have a lot of combo potential. Not only is there a potential to go for a ley line into Apocalypse, but you also have the Entomb walls usable by Diablo for quick stuns. So you can create your own wall there, and then get a quick stun in, so something to also watch out for. I mean, always, of course, assuming that they're playing those specific ults. Red Web Beavers are touching ground, quest is completed for Medivh. Diablo also gets his soul stacks together. So, yeah, things are actually looking pretty good for the blue team, at least when it comes to stacks. They lost out on the first objective, so this is where the Anti-Clown Association is taking a lead. And I like the way that Tychus has already 39 stacks. That's pretty decent this early in the game. Oh, and that is decent too. But Leo gets out. Yeah, those are the moments where Chaotic is really helping the team because that's 20 gems that would have been lost. Nas is able to move out there. Oh, and that's the end of Medivh. Doesn't matter. Quest complete, time to feed. Well, it matters in the sense that he's losing some of his gems. The Anti-Clown Association, damn. They're really, really trying to snowball this first one, aren't they? Big attack coming in, and now they're taking Brightwing down too. That's more gems lost. Oof. I kind of like what they're able to pull off here. That level 10 ability really helping them, and now we're looking at a fort falling. And this is just all happening with the first objective, so already insane value for them. Nicely executed. Tyke isn't even hesitating, popping Odin over here. Yeah. And trying to push for more. Brightwing is just now coming back, and they want, with the help of Sylvanas and Tychus, go for the one in the middle. Three kills to zero. Anti-Clown Association has not gotten a single kill yet. So, things are looking fairly good for uh, the red team. I mean, to be fair, they don't have an insane experience lead or anything. So, they are doing okay, but they haven't really been able to do uh, anything in regards to taking a bigger lead. They destroyed or took away some of the gems, which definitely helps. But there's still the chance for a turn in, and the game can always be flipped. But you can see that there is another opportunity for the red team to get their next turn in, which is pretty big. So two turn ins in a row would be great if they can pull it off. The blue team, they, they should at least, yeah, there it is. They should at least try now very hard to get their own turn in the first one and then see what they can do with this. They, they have to. They can't fall too far behind. So here comes the turn in. They're able to get the web weavers. Can they destroy a fort, at least take some of the walls out? I mean, they gotta do something, right? So we'll see how far this goes for them. But they have to break that momentum that we're seeing from the Anti-Clown Association. And they also kind of have to get a kill here. I mean, you want to, you know, at some point set a bit of a signal. Tigers is at the top and is defending there. Uh, down at the bottom of the map, Leo is basically getting value, but Blaze is there, had to bunk up though. At the top, this is falling, and now they have to push into Odin, as Kelsia is going straight for his R button again. But there's the portal, and there's the opportunity! Wallstun is there, Horrify is being used, and this is the end of Tychus. The first one to fall, didn't get a lot of value out of Odin with this, so there it is, the kill for the blue team, the opportunity to take the fort, and they are repaying the opponent in kind, taking the fort out, Take level 13, actually even a leading experience for them now. So we get a spicy back and forth here, I like it. Damage output 22,000 for Sylvanas, 21,000 for Tychus. Top damage in the game is Gul'dan though, with 23, 24,000 at this point in time. And now the Squeal team is trying to follow up on all the damage that they've already done here. So they're coming in with more momentum now, hoping also for another turn in. The good news for the red team is that they basically secured themselves all of the gems. They didn't lose a whole lot with it. 
And that was kind of important given the situation that they were in. Because right now what essentially is happening is that they still have an opportunity to get another turn in. And we'll see if they can actually pull that one off. So, Godfils is already trying to secure it. They go for Gul'dan. Ah, the ley line. The ley line before the cocoon came out, but it's not over yet. Brandon is still in trouble. Seven gems that he's holding, and he gets out. What? The plays from Chaotic. Chaotic with more big plays right there. Saving heroes all day, every day. Damn. Mediv with some big, big moves. I love it. So damn good. Now, still the opportunity for a turn in, but I gotta give it to the blue team. The squeal team is now getting very, very close of getting another turn in themselves. So, yeah, both of them are working very heavily on it. Three kills to one. Another play being made over on the left side. Kordic already falling back, but I guess now they are solidifying that second turn in. Red team is moving in, is gonna grab it. Oh, sorry, I thought, and then they get interrupted, but it might come at a price. It's 40, 40 gems on Roger. On Sylvanas. The jet propulsion! Too damn good. Porky! Yeah, with the APOC. They could go for some combos later, but for now. Of the Entomb. Leo's ghosting out, and the red team has gotten the turn in. So once again, we're going to get the red team's web weavers. Which will put Sylvanas straight into the spotlight, of course. And highlighting it still, we are 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes in. And we have only gotten so far two, I mean, two thingies, two, uh, well, sorry, four kills. I'm looking at two. No idea. Second turn in, but yeah, we have only gotten four kills in total. So that's definitely a bit of an interesting one. But these pushes, I mean, Odin plus Sylvanas. That is pretty big, and it's exactly what they're using to try and take out another fort in the middle. Blue team will hit an early level 16, very likely, so they could use that uh, for defense at the top, I guess. And that's what they are currently trying to do, so yeah, slowly starting to make a move there. And, well, with that, we have every single fort removed on the blue team side, so they lost everything after all. Apoch, Leyline, and it doesn't execute it properly. They went for Chaotic. Try to go for Medivh. Maybe still a kill against God Phil. Nah, it's not happening. Well, Furion popped this ult right away, so they're saving Nuvarak. Only four kills in this game. 12 minutes in, only four kills. Hasn't really changed. And it is a wild opening into this best of five. Absolutely wild opening right now. So, as it stands, the red team has taken a significant lead again. Thanks to them taking all of the structures out here. Thanks to them getting a few more kills. But as I say it, Anubora gets murdered. Can he go for another one? Leo is moving out. Got the shield here too. They try to turn it. Horrify. Nice. They're isolating Malfurion. This could be the kill that they want. The follow up and the momentum. And there it is. Try and remove more gems from the opponent. Get your own turn in. Bosses up as well. There are some forts that you can take. So now they're trying to hit all the big ones. Straight up the move for boss as they should. Blue Web Weavers are going to be descending as well. Ah, they are at each other's throat. I love it. 97 stacks for Tychus within the rhythm on level 4. And at this point, 42,000 damage for Tychus. Top damage, he has even overtaken Gul'dan, who previously held that spot. And with the boss now, top side and the Web Weavers, mainly here in the middle. I'm not quite sure what they can actually do against the camp that has already been claimed, but of course they're aiming more or less for that topside keep. It's a double, double whammy that they are trying to execute here, and that could, should work for them. But they always have to push into Odin. Odin is back. Roger, 43. Where's the APOC? There it is! And... Ah, they still don't get those hits. That's a lot of cooldowns that you are using in a situation like that if you can't pull it off properly. They at least force the opponent back, so I think that's at least a winning move. The keep is also about to fall, and Leoric is still busy in the middle. So they're taking a keep and a fort out. That's pretty damn good for that turn in. Second turn in, and that is a huge win. They also have a one level lead now, and they might not be done yet either. Moving down to the bottom of the map should really help them to possibly 
take down the bottom fort. Yeah, maybe damage it a little bit. Yeah. They want to have another turn in because they have 60 gems now. So they go for the next turn in here and they're going to be able to complete it. Interrupt. Oh, well, Nintori can actually get interrupted. Okay. I was about to say interrupts are going to be too late, but they're able to do that. And it's the blue team that gets the web weavers. Roger turned in. So they were at least able to uh, safeguard some of the gems here. But it's still, yeah, it's still another, a third turn in for the blue team. And the fort at the bottom of the map is obviously going to fall. I mean, that's not even in question. Even with the siege giants just moving in, that is essentially going to be enough. The question is simply, can they do more? Can they, for example, get themselves another kill here? Can they go for another keep? They go for Maze and Blaze. Diablo also in a bit of trouble, gets a shield. Nintori is coming in. Leyline has been used too. Bottom fort is about to fall. Not even fighting for that. Brandon is low, so is Porky. Eats the grenade from Tychus. And they're all dropping a little bit low, so they got to be very careful. This could quickly turn into a disaster for the blue team if they're losing too many heroes. But they're also closing in on level 20s. So once that they have their Storm Talents, that gives them another lead in these fights. That they probably would be very happy with. Second keep is still in the cards, I guess. But the defense is strong. And here comes level 20. Demonic Circle for Gul'dan. They burn through the bottom wall. They're opening them all up. Web Weaver at the top is still pushing, but everything else has been attacked, defeated. They're looking for an opportunity to get a kill, but it's so far not really presenting itself. They are starting to damage the keeps a little bit, though. Not by too much, but the Siege Giants are now gone, and Brandon is still firing away the entire time. Over and over again with his Fell Flame build. So as it stands, we have 48,000 damage for Gul'dan. Really nice siege damage, too. I mean, he's sitting at 200k, essentially. Whereas Tychus is sitting at 56,000 damage. <laughs> that demonic circle is also really close. Very, very close. I'm not getting too far away on this one. I'm gonna get the ley line out. No follow up there. Mason Blaze moves back towards the base with the 33 uh, gems that he's holding. And he got a turn in. The red team has a turn in, and now they have level 20 talents as well. So this could still be a game that they are able to flip. Now it's even Steven over here. And uh, they try to go for Medivh. Uh, Medivh, there he's dead. No, 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 Medivh. Oh, Inuburak, the shield. How is he still alive? Time and time again, these saves that we're seeing here. Now they're trying to turn it. Tychus is also low. Now the portal is being set up. Diablo Porky. And the Nature's Cure saves Tychus. Now they're going again for Brightwing. Brightwing is able to get out. They're all on the run. And they make it out. Gul'dan, by the way, had to hearth here. He used Demonic Circle and then found himself in a real awkward spot. Hearth, Leyline, Medivh cheating. Didn't do anything for them here. <laughs> Some of these plays are just wild. Let's see how much the Web Weavers are going to be able to do. Because the problem with the Web Weavers is now that they have essentially i mean the 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 waves are starting uh, basically uh, midway so there's a lot of space to cover comes down to team fights at the end of the day of course again so yeah over here next attack is already coming through in the middle that attempting to defend haven't been able to do anything here yet but yeah we're getting some some beastly ones one keep destroyed on the right side. One keep of half HP. All the keeps still properly standing for the blue team. That's essentially the situation that we're in. Diablo wants the stun. Doesn't get it. They gotta move out here. Portal's up. Diablo's trying to come in again. Then nibbling. Gul'dan is defending at the top, but he will have to join them in a moment. He has still a demonic circle that he could use. That is moving in normally for now. Yeah, here comes the Apoc. Nice, nice! Amazing stuns again from Diablo. And Sylvanas gets killed. It looked for a moment like she might survive with 16, 19 hit points. But then Medivh comes in for the final hit. Medivh gets the kill. And now they're chasing them hard. Kaik is currently in Odin. Still good stacks on his level 4. He's 118. But they are popping Blaze, so Blaze gets murdered, and the Squeal team is gaining momentum. 60,000 damage for Gul'dan, big siege damage for him, of course, but yes, huge plays that are being made here now.
So they go for the boss again, and we're by now 19, 20 minutes into the game. So if you are able to claim a boss at this point, then you're definitely going to be in a great spot. That's also the reason why the red team is absolutely willing to see if they can maybe dive in and get a quick kill here, because they know if they lose this, then it's a disaster. But Anubara gets caught and killed. They were absolutely desperate. They thought they had to do something here, and what's going to happen is that they're going to lose the game even faster. They already lost the Nubarak, now Malfurion is gone. Another portal play that allows Diablo to go deep and real aggressive, and the boss will be taken. Tigers alone can't do anything about it. Sylvanas is sitting in the middle of the map, but there's just nothing to do from their perspective right now, and this boss should end the game. 20 minutes in, it's going to hit like a truck. We are only seven kills against three, but yeah, this is the squeal team with the lead in the best of five. I just don't see a way to defend this. This would be an absolutely incredible miracle if they can somehow pull that off, but I just don't see it. The ley line being used here, they're trying to go in for another kill, already applying pressure to Blaze. The boss unmolested so far, big red button of course, already being used as they are trying the next move but the boss is on the core, is starting to take it down slowly and steadily, and the rest of the team is also chipping in with every bit of damage that they have here. And eventually, this is going to be game. There's no defending this. This is the lead, the lead in the best of five for Squeal Team 6 here at the winner bracket semifinal. Diablo falls, the boss won't be defeated in time. This is game. Tomb of the Spider Queen goes to the blue team. GG and well played. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two, we're heading to Dragonshire, everybody. So, Squeal Team 6 with the lead. Awesome first game, by the way. Really awesome first game. Absolutely fantastic. Big back and forth. Lots of battles. Love it. More of that, please. So now we're heading into Dragonshire. Our second map, quick reminder. Then no crazy uh, shenanigans around, uh, pfft, I don't know, like drafts. No special rules, just total vanilla tournament. Also, I pointed out in the last series, I want to do it at least here as well. There is, to my knowledge, still a delay between the sound and the visual in-game, not my voice, but just the game itself. We had the problem a couple of weeks ago. I was able to solve it at some point by reinstalling heroes and fixing a few things. It reappeared and right now, honestly, it's just not worth for me to hunt it down because I'm getting a new PC in roughly a week's time. So the PC that I have right now is going to be used for video editing and the new PC is going to be my streaming PC. So yeah, it's not that big of a problem. A lot of people haven't actually even noticed it. So uh, yeah, for now we're just dealing with it. I know it's a bit annoying. Sorry for that. But yeah, the new PC is already on its way. Uh, I, ha I have a tracking link. I'm very much looking forward to it. Big shout out to Hightech. So, Hoga as our first pick, now that we're heading into Dragonshire for the top lane. So, Blaze is open if you want to have your top laner. Could go for Yorel, depending on the comp. It's kind of fascinating to me that they didn't ban Medivh. Medivh had a huge impact in the last game. Diablo didn't get addressed either, but now we have Porky and Mirrodin. And... Uh, Brandon with the Junkrat follow-up. Mirren is pretty good on Dragonshire. Just traversing terrain, jumping around a little bit. Budget Gimli. Yeah. <laughs> this dwarf launch. I made a joke back then, like yeah, two years ago or something. Who launches the dwarf? Dwarf launch. Somebody needs to launch the dwarf. We personally think that he has a pocket Aragon or something that he can get and then he gets just like pushed. So, yeah, this is like the only explanation that I can come up with. There's a couple of things in Heroes of the Storm that are a bit wacky. There was a thing in... Uh, um, let me actually double check. If you want to have some fun, you can actually check it out for yourself. One of the games that I uploaded to YouTube, it was the series between... Um, yeah, the series between the Enjoyers and, I don't know, someone else. 11 minutes in, I I think it got uploaded. I, I, I have to look it up later. But there is like a weird thing, and we believe that it's like a chromey thing. There's all of a sudden like a scare image, like you have in some of the horror movies that pops up, and one of the people that watched it pointed it out, and I didn't believe it at first. I was like, what is he talking about? And then I slowed it down and actually looked for it and found the most bizarre 
image in the entire thing but I, we believe that it's because of the chromey thing that it pops up but it's essentially just a, a full screen minion that appears all of a sudden on your screen it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous so yeah I don't really know exactly what series it was but it was like one of the recent ones that I got uploaded Battlefield of Eternity 11 minutes in and the enjoyers are playing so if you are want to play a little bit Sherlock Holmes and hunt it down for yourself you can do that and see it but yeah it was strange now we get Diablo we get Lunara over here as we're heading uh, into game number two and the anti-clown association of course wants to bring it back the wolf tag team though for the squeal team with Greymane and Rhaegar so chaotic apparently this time on a full-on damage dealer yeah the dogs are hungry they want to have some medicine over there Bambi is ready Diablo also it's kind of interesting that Diablo is now being played by ACA so Porky is going with Muradin up against Dibbles. Zegara, a page out of the European uh, gameplay book, uh, gets used by ACA. So they have white main and then they set Zegara up at the bot lane for that extra control and wave clear. Which leaves us with Naz as the final hero, final player to pick on Dragonshire. Now these are best of five matches that we have. We had a winner bracket semi-final. And with the lead that we uh, are getting for the Squeal team, what's happening in game Number two. The final pick for them is Urel for the top lane. Ladies and gentlemen, map number two. Let's go. Game number two. The Squeal team is in the lead as the Anti Clown Association is going to try and bring this back. Porky is playing Muradin. We got Chaotic on Greymane. Nintori is playing Riga. Naz on Urel. And Brandon is playing Junkrat. Over on the right side, the red team, the Anti-Clown Association with Mason Blaze, this time on Hogger. Got Phil's on Diablo, we got Kelsia on Zagara. Going into Corpse Feeders over here. And we get Balama on White Main, and Roger is playing Lunara. So, let's go. We have right now... I've actually not really paid attention in game number one if the Squeal team is really rocking a few more money picks. So far I see a severe lack of money picks. I see some clouds, I see a golden cock, I see a rocket, but no money picks. So it's a little bit disappointing. I'm not quite sure if they are at least delivered on Tomb of the Spider Queen. I should have paid more attention, I didn't. But yeah, those were the real big questions and apparently I left them unanswered. So uh, right now we have at the top Brandon is sitting at the solo lane for just a moment. I guess Urel is gonna... Eh? She might play that out at the bottom of the map against Zagara. We'll see. Not quite sure. But yeah, so as is. You know, Porky sitting over in the middle. So he's just rotating between the lanes real quickly. Trying to see what he can do there, and then over on the left, Tori, Chaotic, just starting to go for a couple of their own camps and claim those quickly. One minute mark has obviously passed, so it's time to make some moves on this one. Now in the meantime, we have down at the bottom of the map, Zagara of course going to try and set some creep tumors up, go for that Jade on creep spread, which we haven't really gotten thus far. Quick move towards the top. It's a little bit of a... Oh, actually, I was just about to say, it might be a bit of an easier, slower start into the game. And then Porky started to make a play here. Waits for the cooldown. And I suppose he's going to get out, but gets immediately met by Hogger. And is still trying to escape, but Diablo bullies him. And that is the end of Porky. Overdoing it a little bit and getting punished for it. So, yep, Muradin is gone. He gets eliminated. All the way up at the top. Yep, that camp is at least getting some value for them. Ah, but first blood has already been taken. The Under Clown Association able to take the dwarf out, and now they are controlling also the map fairly well. So that is threatening Dragonite number one, and something that they could take here. So we'll see. If they can, of course, take this one, that would be pretty incredible. Early Dragonite. They're already pushing at the top lane too, so we have a fight here in the middle. And then the pressure plays that are being made up here. Malama now moving in. Roger on his way. We got Got Filth also. They are all trying to break through together with that camp that they set up here. And the double control on the shrine is still posing a problem for their opponent. So that hasn't changed yet either. Mirrodin 
Still attempting to guard it as best as he can, but yep, it is a bit of a tricky spot for them. The red team has come back in the early game with their vengeance. Now, to be fair, that's essentially what we saw in game number one, too. Porgy goes down again. That's the second time that Muradin gets now eliminated. Yeah, he's definitely starting to struggle a bit on this one. Two kills already against the frontliner. Greymane with counter value at the top. Oof, taking the entire wall down. Good for him. So taking the wall down and even some damage on the fort itself. The early level 7 though kicking in for the red team as they're now moving down to the bottom of the map in order to claim another quick camp here. So... And... Well... There it is. So Bruiser camp gets taken. They got that already. But while they are making their move, the blue team has now started to go towards the top and only they want to go for Hogger. I actually think they try to collapse on that fort a little bit. Jungra is the only defender at the bottom of the map and oh no way! No way! The damage over time gets kicked in just as he escapes. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. I really thought he had it, but no. The last tick takes him down. They go for the fort at the bottom of the map and the blue team has essentially no other chance but to go for a reverse move at the top and try and get counter value. So each team takes down one fort on the opponent's side and starts to accelerate the game immediately. Yeah. Damn. So that is an interesting situation that we find ourselves in. Three kills to zero now. ACA doing especially good in the early games in game number one and now also in game number two. They had some trouble then in the mid and towards the late game to uh, yeah, just control the game further and build on it. But maybe here they can. And so far got filled with Diablo at the front has been doing a great job as well. So they're going for, uh, for Zagara now. Zagara is still alive and makes it out. The saves from White Man here are insane. And now Porky is barely able to jump out. This time he survives though. It looked for a moment as if he might have gone too deep again and gets punished for it. Talking about going a bit too deep. Urel is already at the top and pushing the catapult straight into the tower range. So that's some extra damage. But damn, both of the teams are already starting with early aggression. There's level 10 though. So level 10 kicks in. Gives them the rogue abilities. And now we get more. More is in. We got the horde up pulled as well. We're getting the leaping stride. And on the other side, oh my god, Porky with Haymaker. Oh, every time I see this, I have some real stomach pains. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see where this goes. That could be a problem. I mean, this could be a bit of a issue because survivability for Muradin is going to be rather low. If he can really isolate someone and make some plays with that, I mean, by all means. But I remain a bit skeptical. So they're trying to go for a move here. So far, yeah, Lunara unimpressed. Bambi is still doing all right. There's some blazes starting to come in from the side too. Lunara still acting as bait a bit. White main came in as well, and here comes Diablo. There's the APOC. And there is the hit for Chaotic. And Grey Main is gone. Grey Main gets eliminated. Triple more! Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. It's a triple, baby! And they're all walking away. Yeah. I kind of wanted them to at least get one. Triple Maws are awesome, but of course you also need the follow-up. Spoiler alert. In this case, there was none. So, yeah, no follow-up on this. But they are still trying to deny the Dragonite. I mean, we're seven minutes in, we haven't seen one yet. So, yeah, they go for Diablo, uh, for, uh, for Muradin, who, by the way, has, ooh, close call for him, who has no avatar. Went into Haymaker. I'm not quite sure if he even used it yet. I don't think he actually used the Haymaker. Okay, there's a the Haymaker. It's basically the get away from my shrine play. No kill for them. Four kills to zero. Does that remind every anybody from game number one? It's essentially the same thing. Now they have the double control just for a moment. Not for long. And that yeah, Kelsia is going to try and retake that as quickly as he can.
Still no DK. Eight minutes in. No Dragonite. But level 13 for both of the teams soon, TM. 22,000 for Lunara. Bambi is currently the top damage dealer in the game. With Greymane sitting on 13,000. Yeah, and then again. There's a level 13 talents kicking on already a bit early. It's a small window, it's nothing crazy. It would still be nice if they could force a fight around it, but not really sure that's really gonna happen. <laughs> Hockey, every single... Oh, there's the, there's the play. Try to make the play. Double more again. And this time the APOC follow up, right? No? Eh, yes, we got a follow up with an APOC, but not the way that I thought it would. Yeah, that Ancestral also didn't hit, didn't hit the intended target. We wanted to go for Junkrat, but it actually connected with Greymane. So, yeah. They go for the Dragonite, and there it is. Lunara turns into a big beautiful lizard with a battle axe and big wings and there comes the hit. By the way, talking about lizards, so like the one thing, I actually looked at the other day into, I, I looked like, you know, when I was younger we wanted to always have lizards in the garden. And so if you have any space uh, around the, an apartment, a house or whatever, where you can have a little bit of, uh, a couple of lizards and lizards are actually quite frequent here in Spain. It's always nice if you can attract some, right? And so I was looking for that. So what, what they really enjoy the most, and I was just trying to freshen up a little bit from what I remember from being a kid. And when I looked at it, I saw hundreds of videos on YouTube and also stuff, how to kill lizards. I'm like, the fuck is wrong with people? I get it here on Dragonshire where you want to kill the Dragonite as a lizard. But why do people want to kill lizards? I'm like, what? That's amazing when you have them in your in your garden or outside or whatnot. I think it's is is a huge problem in the U.S. that you have lizards in your house or something. Like I really didn't get it. Like we were, my sister and I were always when we were young, when we were kids, we would always like run around and like catch lizards and then like try to get them to settle in in the, the garden of my parents or my grandparents. Like totally ridiculous. So and all of a sudden everybody wants to kill lizards. Stop killing lizards. That's not a good thing. Not quite sure what's wrong with people here. If you want to kill a lizard, kill a Dragonite like they just did. Not really a lot of value, but super weird. I was just like, what the hell? I must miss some piece of information there. Something you must be missing. Like lizards, geckos, you know? Like all of that stuff is absolutely amazing. The more that you have, the better. But yeah, anyways. So, uh, 16 kicking in in a moment. Still not a single kill for the blue team. Murden. I know I said before, I'm not a fan of Haymaker. I haven't seen anything that would change that opinion. Maybe he can still make a play and convince me. But so far, yeah, he's just missing too much of a survivability once that he claims that. So the Riptire comes out. Uh, Ural jumps in. They want to go for Diablo. Haymaker. And he gets shut down again. And that's the problem. We have Intercession as the level 7 talent on the side of the opponent, so this is a huge problem. And White Mane just absolutely has the number. So the value that we've got out of Haymaker so far is absolutely zero. Now Murden gets caught by the Maw as well. And yeah. So Murden gets attacked, gets the Ancestral, they go for Diablo. Nobody dies over here. It's actually it, it's crazy. Yeah, they try again. Maybe now, White Mane, and finally they get a kill. First blood for the blue team, and they're following it up with the second one. Diablo goes down to but damn. Squeal team six. It seems like we might get a repetition of what we had before, that the mid game belongs to the blue team. The early game, I really think the ACA is doing so much better here. But now we have with those two kills a quick move down to the bottom of the map in order to try and take the camp here. So the attempt to uh, take them, tem attempt to go for the Dragonite too. So I think nobody's going to interrupt that. Urel is already on the way and they're not really fighting for this at the bottom of the map. I actually think that the Red Team could have tried to deny that, but they don't. So the Dragonite gets taken. And we're talking 12 minutes in now. So this one is going to start hurting a little bit more. Uh, let's see what they can do with that. And off we go. So, Zerg Queen gets kicked around a little bit. 
pressure at the bottom of the map with Graham and Hogger, by the way, at the top, trying to uh, close the experience gap a bit. And Dragonite still sitting tight here. And another punt. Definitely one for the special teams in the NFL here. He's, he's trying out. And he's doing well. It's already going for the wall at the keep, by the way, and lets the minions just attack the fort. That works also well for them. They can still take this, more or less. Eh, well, they can poke a little bit. Is URL gonna take it? Yep. Jumps in, takes it out, so all of the forts are now destroyed on the red team side. It must really suck for them. They have the 4 kill to 0 lead. They are getting the first Dragonite. They take a fort out at the top, uh, sorry, at the bottom. And then they're just again, I don't want to say falling apart, but they're getting again hit hard by the opponent's comeback attempts. And so far, things are working nicely. So, right now we got 50,000 damage for Lunara. She's nearly doubling what Junkrat has, but if that doesn't, I mean, again, if you don't get the kills and you can't get the follow-up, that doesn't really help you. So, as it stands now, we have a one-level advantage, and what's probably a bit more important to the blue team, they have a shot at an early level 20 talent. Which should really then help them too. So an early level 20 for them, definitely possible from here on out. And yeah, how uh, exactly is the ACA going to deal with that? Because they got to deal with it somehow, right? They got to do some moves at least. We have level 20 kicking in soonish. And that storm talent could give them another Dragonite if it spawns early. They could just push for a keep. And try and take that. So there's maybe an opportunity to try and do that. Yeah, Pocky is already jumping over here. Still looking for some haymaker value. Which we still haven't had. <laughs> he baited out some white made cooldowns. I guess that's about it. I don't think they got a kill or anything. But there's level 20. And the Dragonite just got announced. So that puts you in a decent spot. You can A. Push for some of the keeps. Bridge of death? Really? That's the play they're trying to make. Alright. Minion Wave gets taken out, Zagara gets hit, but yep, they're trying to pin them down quickly, I suppose. And if they now get somebody on the top shrine, there should be a Dragonite. Yes, anchor the place, hog at the bottom, it is a DK. They're gonna get it. DK, well, somebody, okay, Rel is gonna take it. They're letting it play out slowly. They know they have time. Get the Dragonite with the Rel. Set that all up properly and then move down to the bottom of the map and just do your thing. Creep spread is still being slowed down by Muradin, mainly. So he moved in, started to take those out. Obviously his 13 helps for that a lot. Going for Bronze, be it Rage, yeah, definitely helping. And they should be able to take down the bottom keep now. The wall has already been opened up. They got Greymane, they got a Dragonite. Rip Tire to burn the next minion wave down or at least keep everyone at bay. Dragonite, by the way, is chasing Lunara right now and just busy in the middle. As long as they're still poking at the bottom at least, that's kind of fine. But DK, a bit of a weird pass down here. They are going to get that keep though. I would be shocked if it didn't happen. Yeah, just hammers away, uses the ability a little bit, kicks Lunar out, uh, Zagara out, and this is going to be keep number one. So they're getting one keep, not more than that, but this sets them up nicely for a push for core later. Both teams now with level 20. Which makes the Gara quite annoying because again she has pack instincts now. She went into corrosive saliva obviously on level 16 and now at the bottom of the map yeah, Muradin was initially trying to go for the camp but then they're just falling back because here's the invade and they knew that could happen. Muradin jumps in, they're going for Diablo, bullet connects, Dibble's in trouble, more APOC! It's not timed properly! They get them all at least, but there's the Ancestral, and the second one connects too. But the Hellgate play against Rhaegar got filled with some filthy plays here. So has Urel though, Junkrat is gone too, Greymane wants the kills, pong 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 pong. Ha ha ha, doesn't get the kill and dies. <laughs> Oh, but they got the fort and nobody else died. This could have been a total disaster for the red team. But now they're going for another kill and, well, they get it. So, right now, the Squeal team is essentially just committing honorable Sudoku. Those were a couple of weird plays towards the end. They had a, a few moments where it seemed like they might win the fight and turn it around. But after that, you're probably better off to fall back. Why are you fighting? What are you doing? 
buy a little bit of time, that's fine. But why are you jumping out like this? I'm telling you, Haymaker is such a garbage talent. You can win the, the odd out game with it, but that was just not worth it. Shrine activating in 17, that might be a freebie on the Dragonite. With Avatar, I think they could have done way more in that situation. God, I hate Haymaker. He's such a gamble. Every now and then you have a game that really feel, like I really believe you win games despite Haymaker, not because of it. Very rarely do you have a game where you know Haymaker is really a big deciding factor. So now they gotta get the five men back on the map. They gotta deal with the Dragonite. DK is gonna be taken. They have done damage at the top though, so the keep has taken some damage here. And this is obviously you know, over. I, I like that it's back and forth. I like that the ACA has a chance of actually taking the game now. Now we might go into game number three on a tie in the series. But eight kills to three. And yeah, let's see how much it can do. <laughs> and Urel, get the hell out of there. What are they doing? I mean, they want to take care of, I guess, that camp and play it safe. Mirrodin, careful. Porky, and he jumps out. They're wasting their time right now. I am a little bit surprised that that Dragonite has so far not done anything. Now they got another minute left, so they're not running out of time. Any, they're, they're patient. They're very, very patient here. A couple of connects, a couple of plays being attempted. We gotta slow this down. So, blue team has to defend or try to. Yeah, Urel comes in again. Riptire is already out. Dragonite is still at 50%. Has not gone for that keep yet. They go for Diablo for just a moment. And Lunara obviously is one of the main damage dealers. So, as long as she's in the Dragonite, it's a bit of an issue. They want that keep. I don't think they can get it. Unless they get some kills now. Again, they make the play for the back line. Lunara, Bambi, jumping in, out. Lots of damage against Urel, but they gotta fall back. So they have gotten nothing out of this one. They have gotten absolutely zero. They pushed, well, they pushed the lanes out, so there's that, but they haven't gotten the key. 20 minutes in. Diablo again going for Muradin. Thank God that he has Avatar. Thank God. Oh, <laughs> wait. He doesn't. He doesn't have Avatar. So yeah, no avatar, and therefore he has no chance and dies. Okay. Sad day for him. So, with that, ri oh, Bambi gets blown up by Junkrat. Absolutely blown to pieces. And Diablo is not, not looking too hot either. Chaotic wants him. Chaotic wants to kill here. Chaotic! Yeah, he doesn't want to follow into the choke point, man. I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Four kills, two, nine. And yeah, the chance to get Muradin back in 17 seconds. I have no idea who's gonna win this. I think the next Dragonite will probably decide it, but I am not so sure. Because this one didn't do a whole lot of work. So this is a bit weird. But okay, we now have Shrines activating 25 seconds, 4 kills to 9, yeah, Nas, I, oh, I'm looking at Urel just sitting in the bush and I always think if Diablo just gets a good stun combo off against her then maybe she's dead as well. If you lose a hero here that would be a disaster and she actually is on cooldown on her ult. Well, there's the stun combo but the follow up isn't there. They are toying with fire. Porgy gets the Ancestral super early. More against Rega. But no, they couldn't kill Zagara. Kelsey is kept alive by non- Oh, and that's the kill against Urel. Urel is gone and White Main keeps Zagara alive. I find the timing on some of these fights just so strange. So right now the big pork, but Maze and Blaze is dead. The a pork hits two, and Muradin goes down before he can use his avatar. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know why? Because he doesn't have avatar. <laughs> yep, topside four is now about to go down. We got a four versus three. It's a wild game. 
I think some of the fights should have been delayed a bit because they were waiting for some very important cooldowns and they should have gotten them. Specifically when I'm looking at Lunara, for example, it fe uh, sorry, for Ural, it felt like she should have got him, uh, gotten this. So, uh, with that, now the Dragonite, and I mean, what are they going to do with it this time? I assume very little because Hogar is missing. And if Kata pulls in the middle, they have to deal with two. Zagara is going to do that, or they're going to lose another key because now we are 23 minutes into the game, so Kata pulls hit hard right now. Very hard. How many times did Murder now die? Five times! I'm shocked. I'm not really shocked, but yeah. Alright, so another minute for the Dragonite. We've been here before. I think this time at least the bottom keep is gonna fall. They're always focusing on the bot lane because that's where you can set most of the camps up. But just recently, it is really the game of uh, the Underclown Association. They're doing better in the fights. The Gara is now top damage in the game with 90,000. Yeah. And, well... Not really moving in on this one yet. <laughs> if the blue team wins this. I mean, right now they're still ahead, but I think they're losing the keep now. And the team fights haven't really been going their way. Urel still fine, hasn't lose, used her ult yet either. This time they go for Bambi, Greymane. Damn, Greymane with a big damage. I mean, the entire time he's sitting there. Now they're going into the back line again. They're zoning out Lunara the best that they can here. Diablo, wall stun, Hellgate. They go for Greymane and he's still totally fine. Urel though, she falls, didn't get a second heal, and this might just be game. Chaotic is in trouble, Urel is gone, they got the four man here, they start pushing, they're looking better and better and better on this, and they wanna finish it. They're sieging up on the opponent's core, it's a four versus five. Once again, Porky just looking for opportunities, they're taking the Hydras down as quickly as they can. On the damage numbers, Greymane with 80,000, Junkrat with 86,000, but it's Lunara that absolutely punks them here with 104k. Hasn't died yet. White Mane has kept Zagara alive. Did I say Lunara? I meant Zagara. White Mane kept Zagara alive every time she got focused. Every single time. Absolutely bonkers. There were so many instances where it felt like, okay, she's dead. She doesn't stand a chance. Just collapse on her, and then White Man was like, "Nope, not on my watch. Not happening." So, right now, twelve kills to five, and well, still a chance to bring it back. But the blue team, they didn't like the last six minutes weren't really all that great for them. They still have in the middle these continuous catapults, though, and these are a threat. They definitely are. Porky, 34,000 damage for him. Urel, 20 seconds on the cooldown. Rhaegar has his ult back. They're still waiting for Urel though. The siege over here is happening and Hogger needs to take care of that or they're going to lose another keep here. This could become a problem. Somebody needs to go back and deal with this. And quickly at that because look, how, look what the catapults do with this. So Dragonite gets again threatened. And gets taken! <laughs> Not like this, really? I mean, the keep is likely going to get destroyed now, so they're not going to hold that, but damn, they're going to go for core with this. If they interrupted, they would have gotten a free keep likely, and they could have played this out, but that's, that's just crazy. Keep in the middle is going to get destroyed. Porky gets the ancestral double jump by him. They have to use shit like that too early. The ancestral is already out. No avatar. Yes, the keep has fallen. Yes, there's still a couple of catapults coming through the middle, but the Dragonite is a problem. Here comes Diablo, trying again with another wall stun. They're jumping out. To be fair, the Dragonite is losing hit points insanely quickly. We're 27 minutes in. It's hitting like a truck here. So that shield is gone within seconds. But the DK is gone. DK is gone. So is the shield. 80% on the core, and they're zoning them away. They're zoning them away! The game is still not over! This is ridiculous! 
We're 27 minutes in and they finally made it there. Now Diablo gets bullied around as he goes for the A-Poke. He's already gone. He's still at his stacks, but they're trying to turn it on white. Mate, here's the chance. Valama is dead. This is the opportunity. Can they go for Zagara? No, they're turning it on Hogger. They want Hogger next. And they're going to get him. Hogger is going to... No, he want to pull it. He's still dying. No, he's not. He is. He's not. Maybe. Jump, little dwarf. Jump. <laughs> and Hoga is dead. Hoga is dead. And that is game, I think. Maybe. Please. <laughs> 8 kills to 12. 108,000 for Junkrat. Two, three defenders. The damage dealers are still all there. They want the game now. And let's see if they can. They are poking with everything they have. 22 seconds for white main ridiculous what a ridiculous game seriously absolutely ridiculous game in this series crazy absolutely crazy so guys what can they do on this one there's diablo diablo is down and i think this yeah this is it <laughs> a 2-0 lead 2-0 lead as the squeal team turns the game around. Insane. GG. Okay, some absolutely ridiculous comebacks here. The Anti-Clown Association might lose the series here. This is game number three. We're going to Towers of Doom and damn, that late game. Insane. I still hate Haymaker. I still hate it. But that late game was absolutely crazy. Good for the Squeal team. Winning that game must give them a lot of momentum and also, of course, a like, really uh, nice mental boost as well. But that was just nuts that they were able to win this. The last six, seven minutes were disastrous for the blue team. They essentially lost every single fight. But then, you know, towards the end, I mean, it was a little bit too much to handle. That last fight, Diablo falling, Hoga dying, uh, and them getting kills on White Main finally too. It allowed them to go for the game. And again, two keeps were already destroyed, so Catapult Pressure would have been starting to mount up as well. The one thing for the Anna Clown Association, really, they didn't really do enough with the Dragonites. They had a lot of good DKs, of late game DKs, and they were never able to do enough damage with that. They could have done more, but they didn't. They didn't play properly. They lost it too early. So, um, I mean, again, always easier to say when you're just watching the game, right? Not playing yourself. And hindsight is obviously 2020. I mean, point out some of those things at the time. But it's always easy when you can just look at it from a bird's eye view and are not actually playing and have to make those decisions. But either way, for ACA, this is now a bit of a disaster. They get Diablo again, and I really liked what God Filth did with Diablo in most cases. He had like one or two moments where he was put under pressure, where it didn't work out for him properly. Now they could maybe combo also if he wants to go into Apocalypse again with an arrow from Hanzo. But no matter how they are playing it, Diablo has been throughout the series an incredible force for whichever team played them. So we'll see what God Filth can now do in this one. But yeah, Stitches gets banned, okay. Maybe there would have been an opportunity for Stitch. Um, this Junkrat plays, yeah. Depending on what else they're getting. They already showed Medivh one, so if they want to go for a full-on kidnap combo, they can play Stitches together with Medivh and then kidnap the targets properly. But with that said and done, we get our double pick for uh, the blue team. And well, here comes Anduin and there's Muradin. So, ready for action. Okay, Mirrodin plus Blaze. Porky, please, Avatar. Can we please move away from that Haymaker nonsense? Oh. They won, but I believe he died six times, I think. So, yeah. I mean, to each their own. It's working for them, I suppose. But I'm still not a fan. HGC, the Hanzo Genji Cup. There they are again, the duo. Hanzo Genji and we get the Haka. So double global. Brightwing, the Haka, Diablo. So they go for the whole shebang here. Whereas we are left with the final pick for the blue team for Chaotic. Again, it is match point number one for the blue team. 
So can they make this a 3-0 victory? Can the Squeal team win a third one in a row? And if so, what is their second damage dealer? They already have Brandon on Junkrat. And Chaotic is playing the triple frontline with Thrall, trying to also go for some Alpha Wolf Shen against, against uh, Diablo, I suppose. Let's go! Game number three, Towers of Doom. Game number three, Porky on Murden. For the blue team, we got the Squeal team with Nintori on Anduin, Nas on Blaze, Brandon on Junkrat, and Chaotic on Thrall. Over on the right side of the map, the Anti-Clown Association with Maze and Blaze on Dehaka. We got Valama on Brightwing, got Filth on Diablo, Kelsia is playing Hanzo, and Roger is playing Genji. So, the stage is set for the second game in this, uh, sorry, for the third game in the series, and for match point number one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we get Trash Lightning, look at that! Thrall with Trash Lightning on the map, trying to stack the damage, and talking damage! Damn, Genji gets murdered immediately, that's a statement coming into the first match point. Nice! That was actually huge. Two stacks immediately for Thrall, good for him. And that's how you open things up here. What is this disgusting mode? Chaotic, we need to talk. That is, like, this is the kind of lizard that you absolutely are okay killing. I would kill that lizard too. That's not the kind of lizard that I was talking about earlier. But yeah, I have no idea why people want to kill lizards. That's just wrong on so many levels. Lizards are amazing. I guess, like, it depends a little bit on what kind of... We're talking cute little European lizards, like geckos and these things. But that's also the kind of stuff that they want to... I'm not going to go on the same rant again. So, they kill Genji. Genji is getting murdered. Genji is getting absolutely murdered. Double kill against Genji already. Guys, we're only a minute into the game and he already died twice. Genji is not having a good day over here. So, that's a problem. And now the camp has been stolen away. Blaze is still at the top. Blue team has to try and get out of this, but I don't think that's gonna pose a big problem for them because Genji is also now just coming back. That is not the start into the game that you really want here. Anduin with a quick pull as Porky was for a moment in some trouble. So that is quite the start for the Squeal team. I mean, that's a pretty amazing start if you ask me. Doesn't get much better than that. Fantastic opening here for them. And I am starting to get a little bit worried for the Underclown Association. Maybe game number two broke them. They looked so good for such a long time. And I could totally understand if they were a little bit unhappy with how things went there. So now they go for God Filth. Brightwing saves the day. Barely saves herself. But the pressure is still there. So Diablo now has to hearth back. And they're already falling down to the bottom of the map. But it is a bit of a tough one. That is a toughie. Now this is a comeback map of course, but also we have five stacks for Thrall. So Chaotic is not doing too bad this early on. And they are breaking through that bottom gate and wall like it's nothing. Easy destruction, no problem whatsoever. The thing opened up so the bell tower is exposed. And here comes Genji again. <laughs> and immediately upon seeing Muradin decides that it's a good time to move away. Another storm ball to the face would probably not help. Oh my god, not again. Not again! The shield! And he dies for the third time! Roger, what happened to you? No! That's three times that Genji got killed. Three deaths in three minutes. Oh my god. They're gonna get two out of the three channels. Yep, that one's already done for... Thrall, by the way, at the bottom of the map, also starting to stack up his level 4 now. But... Boah! Three kills to zero. Genji killed three times already. And... yeah. Well, Junkrat? Now they're going for Genji again. I think at this point they're starting to get a little bit cocky. They see Genji and they want another kill, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to be that easy for them. What they are definitely doing is take more of these structures out. And Roger is, of course, hoping to redeem himself here, but, well, it's not going to be easy. This is going to be a tough game for the red team, uh, seriously, in all seriousness. Yeah, now the wall in the middle is also opened up, so that's another problem that they got to face off with. 
at least the side wall is open up and the tower is not looking too good either. So all of the early game momentum is really in the hands of the blue team. Absolutely. And the Anti-Clown Association with the back to the wall. 0-2 in the best of five series. Really struggling there. Behind Bahar for level. This is this always has been the biggest comeback map in the pool. So if you are scaling into the late game and you do well there, you can uh, always come back. But it's not going to be easy. So big hits are now coming in. I honestly also want to see how this is working out for Valamar. Whiteman was a huge part of why the last game went for a long time very well for the red team. So now that they're having bright wing, they need to play a very different style. I'm not quite sure if that caters properly to them. Naz gets attacked. Nice. The wall stun at least avoided. But Blaze is still going to fall to this. Blaze still dies. Rest of the team attempting initially to uh, save him is now slowly retreating. A few more stacks for Thrall. So yeah, he has another opportunity to maybe get a stack or two together over here. But he's just slowly building it up. And he's also getting the level 4 quest completed. I mean, he's only one good hit away from it. Uh -huh. Or of course losing it here, so he needs to be very careful. It's another stack on this. And quest completed 5 minutes in. Nice! Nice, 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 nice. So. Sweet move right there. Alrighty. By the way, overlay was obviously wrong. It's a 2-0 in the best of three, not a 1-0. My bad. Wrong button being hit. Shannon is already there. Meriden survives. And now they have level 10. So, there's Avatar. Whoop, whoop. Thank God. Avatar is in the house. No haymaker. Watch him lose the game now. <laughs> uh, Porky. Uh, yeah. Just jumping around immediately. You get Sundering. Nine stacks for Thrall. I mean, this is not your typical Trash Lightning map, to be absolutely honest. I'm not quite sure if he's going to complete it in a reasonable time frame or not. What I assume we can say is that he is going to get good damage out of it no matter what. I mean, obviously the big power spike when you complete the quest is what you're aiming for. But you're still building damage even before that. So, they are poking at the bottom, Bell Tower, Thrall, they are doing a nice job staying uh, far back so that Thrall doesn't get uh, easy stacks in, but with three kills to one and another one coming together now for him, Chaotic is building on it. He has 10 right now, so he's slowly getting there. And we're now six, seven minutes in, uh, once that we are fighting more over on for a longer period over those altars. I think Thrall can also stack this much easier, so we'll see if he's able to complete it because then he becomes an absolute poke monster against the opponents. But there's the double, the double altar. It shouldn't really be an issue, normally it's just like an exchange between the left and right side. And that's it. I don't think anybody's going to properly fight over this or do anything crazy. But with that we're now having another Siege Giant camp taken. Uh huh. Roger over on the left side now. Oh, nearly eating that Stormbolt again. Nobody to follow up on it, but still. So, yeah, Tehaka also, of course, there. Junkrat at the bottom of the map. Thrall is channeling. Nobody interrupting. Okay, they're all fine. Everybody has just settled for the typical exchange. Shots get fired as the ACA is still... Oh, well, yeah, maybe he needs to... No, he doesn't have a bunker. He's dead. He's dead. Second time that he dies. So, on the one side, three times Genji was targeted and dropped. And then on the other, it is two deaths on Blaze that change things. So, yeah. There comes the Light Bomb. X-Strike. And the arrow! It might just be the end of Nintori. And the win is on the run. And is able to get out. No way. They actually all escaped here. Great job by Nintori. Getting away in that situation, that was pretty big. Another quick check also by Thrall, and he's now sitting at 12 stacks. So he's nearly halfway done with this. We're 8 minutes in. Haven't seen too many altar fights either. This is now slowly starting. So I guess he's going to start building this further. But already good... Oh my god, Hanzo down. Junkrat essentially with a quick kill here by himself. Now they have level 13 talents. They're ready for both sides, but they want that bell tower, don't they? Thrall is coming in. Sundering is up. Could use it here. Looking maybe for a chance. First they're starting... Th oh, there's the barbecue. And Blaze is moving in as well. Jet propulsion and... Yeah, they're not greeting on any of this. No sundering yet either. 
Roger on Genji still in some trouble. And they get the Bell Tower. So Thrall the entire time was holding back his ult. The same also for Murden. A lot of them were playing this out very slow. Didn't want to risk anything here. Didn't greed for a kill. And it played out nicely. They get the Bell Tower. And they still have everything they need in order to bring this back. Bit of a problem for Blaze for just a second. Because he's still on cooldown. Arrow comes back out again. Light Bomb still connects. Nice. Thundering is out too. They unleash everything now. So for the altar, everything gets unleashed here. Only Avatar hasn't been used yet. Porky, yeah, in the thick of things now. Another Storm Bolt connects. Valamar with the channel, and he gets it. Three shots fired. Not more than that because of the Bell Tower situation. But at least he denied it to the opponent. That was the more important part when you're falling behind in Bell Towers the way they do right now. So as it stands, we have Blaze still moving through the top. Trying to do his thing here. And down at the bottom of the map, Brandon currently just slowly riding around on his little pocket rocket. Uh-huh. But they want this one back and they're going to get it back. That's an interesting third game. Early game was absolutely atrocious for the Anti-Clown Association. Now things are slowly starting to look a little bit better for them. They're closing the experience gap. They are actually ahead in the points on the core. So they are starting to stabilize here. Maybe it's getting ahead in the early game that's really the problem here. So all hail Roger for dying three times. You know, he did it. <laughs> he knew exactly what he was doing. There were no coincidences here. No mistakes. Thrall now by uh, 22,000 damage. Still slowly working his stacks in. And Chaotic. Eh, second highest damage dealer on the team. Needs to also get some damage out again. He's the one who... Pretty much has to. Oh, really? Okay! Arrow is used, gets immediately connected. That is a bit of a greedy move. But damn, this could be a very awkward fight. Bunker is already up very, very early, and they're letting the boss leash. Yeah, they're letting the boss leash, but damn, they were really trying for this one. Now, with the level 16 talents that have just now been dropped, we get the synergy with Alpha Bull for Thrall. So, this is really going to start threatening Diablo a lot more during team fights. Genji at the bottom of the map now aiming for the altar. And. Yeah, gets interrupted by Blaze. But Thrall can now really start. Yeah, look at this. Look at, look at Diablo. He, he doesn't like that at all. Thrall is murdering him. Absolutely murdering him. Now they're trying to go for the double kill here. Valamar on the run with Brightwing. Dehaka came in too. Blaze is channeling at the bottom of the map. But damn, now all of a sudden the blue team with big damage output. Big stacks also for Thrall. They're getting Dehaka, but they lost Junkrat. The fight not over yet. Poor kill with Avatar. And all of a sudden he doesn't die. Shocking, I know. Oh my god, who would have thought? Yeah. Starts to go in over here and doesn't hit the storm for a round. That was not really anything to do with that. 18 stacks now for Thrall. And Thrall's damage output is pretty neat. Partly also because he has the Alpha Bolt synergy and really starts threatening Diablo time and time again now. So, not bad. They still want to go for that boss? Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Top lane is all that they're aiming for. But, yeah, it's... This is getting, especially for Diablo, a lot harder now. Bunker was available. Here comes again. Thrall. Hit after hit. And God Filth has to drop out immediately. Even when he doesn't get insta-killed or anything, he needs to retreat. If you have a tank that really suffers against the opponent's front line, that takes a lot of opportunities away from you. So Thrall is now at 36,000 damage. He's still building his level 1 numbers. Once he completes that, it gets worse and worse and worse. But with him coming in and hitting those wolves and then the attacks following up with Alpha Wolf, it's a huge problem. So, yeah, they want to go for the spot and... Oh, blue team is low. They don't have a lot of uh, ults here. Sundering gets used. They want to at least get a kill out of this, if not the camp. Camp is taken by the red team. Genji goes down, though. Roger is eliminated. They hope for more, I guess. Thrall at least is now at 21 stacks, so it's only 9 stacks away. The Stormbolt misses. But, yeah. I'm honestly a bit worried now for the ACA because the problem that they are going to face is that with Thrall completing his level 1, he's going to have even more power. Level 20 talents are going to become a problem for them. 
and it's already problematic. So the double channel is going to go to the blue team because Genji is missing. That's four shots fired. Another four following shortly after. They're down to 12 points on the core now against 21. Things are definitely starting to get nasty over here. And yeah. All depends on the fights now. Thrall has already a lot of damage, even without his level 1 being completed. And he's not greeting for it either. They're just playing around the altars, they're playing it fine. Porky with the zoning storm bolt for just a second. Trying to anticipate where Diablo would move. And Dibbles doesn't like that either. God Filth played such an aggressive second game and made so many good moves for his team, but right now he has to be very careful. If Muradin comes in and hits him with the storm bolt and Thrall follows up on this, then he is dropping hit points insanely quickly. So, yeah. But he's also the one that needs to engage, right? Needs to make the play. Stormball is in. Wolf comes out and immediately gets rooted. Attack. Brightwing needs to help him out. Another stack for Thrall. Ah, well, can they get another stun here? Muradin should have the cooldown back. Gets it. Yep. And once again, the save from Brightwing. Muradin jumping out. Here comes Pocky Arrows. Ha <laughs> save from Anduin. The bunker is up. Isolation. And I guess Blaze might fall. There's the barbecue Diablo. Insta gift. Blaze with a stun. Gets a shield. And they are going in for the second kill. The frontline destroyed. Diablo dead for the full duration this time. So is the Haka. And there's level 20 any moment. The Squeal team, ladies and gentlemen, on their way to a potential victory. They're going to get some bell tower conversions here. Altar is spawning. Thankfully for the Anti-Clown Association, it's only a single altar. So that's really the one thing that helps them here. But they're going to drop down into the single digits, of course. Blaze at the top is still pushing. I don't think he can convert the bell tower over. But they're going to work together now, either on the middle or the top. Five shots are fired. The core is down to seven points. And with the level 20 talents, they can make the moves there. Now the chance. Stormball, jet propulsion. Yep, there it is. Bye-bye, Hanzo. He gets murdered. That's another staggered death on the side of ACA. And they are falling apart here. Here comes the play by the Squeal team as they are smelling blood in the water. They have an opportunity to go for the next Bell Tower conversion. And they take it. They take the top 10 kills, 2-3. Seems like we're gonna see 30k against Squeal Team 6 in the winner bracket final unless an absolute miracle happens here. The Jet Propulsion misses. Maybe that's where it all starts to fall apart for them. Bunker is out. They go for the middle. They go for the Haka. And he's dead again. The Haka is gone. And now it's time for Diablo to die once more. He gets murdered. The two frontliners both destroyed. That's the full conversion. And that is game. They got every single bell tower under their control. The barrage has just started, and this is it. The Anti-Clown Association, they were mega close in game number two to turn things around. It didn't work for them. It was a comeback for the Squeal team at the end that decided the second game on Dragonshire. And now that we're moving into game three, or that we are in game number three, ooh, big arrow, we are going to see that victory for the blue team. 12 kills to 3. The final shots are being fired. Only 2 on the core. And there's obviously no saving this any further. Hanzo is gone. And this is game. Congratulations. Squeal Team 6 move on to the winner bracket final to face off against 30k. After taking down the Anti-Clown Association with a 3-0. GG. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.